Here is our second transformation of vectors in R3, and I think it's a very interesting one. And once again, I need to specify how each entry is transformed, and it needs to be precise enough that you can apply this transformation to any input. And I think in this case it is. So we will once again apply it to the vector 1, 2, 3, and to the vector 7, 7, 9. And let's once again translate the expression into words. And in words, this transformation invites you to replace the first entry with the average of the first and second, replace the second entry with the average of first and second also, and leave the third entry unchanged. So, this vector will become 3 halves, 3 halves, 3, 3 halves, 3 halves, 3. Okay, what about 7, 7, 9? Okay, 7, 7, 9. 7 becomes 7 plus 7 over 2, 7. This 7 also remains a 7, and this 9 also remains a 9. Okay, so we now understand what this transformation does, and the question is, is it linear? And I will once again leave it up to you to explain why this transformation is indeed linear. Use the sum criterion and multiplication by a scalar criterion, and you will be able to explain in words why this transformation is indeed linear. So then comes the next most interesting question, uh, the question of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And then there will be one more interesting question that I very much look forward to. So you see one of them right here. Well, that was almost by accident, not quite. But I actually think that we can extract a little bit more out of what we're seeing here. So this will be a very interesting discussion on eigenspaces and so forth. So you'll see what I mean. So the fact that the last entry remains unchanged can be taken advantage of all on its own. And the corresponding eigenvector that takes advantage of this is 0, 0, 1. Because 0, 0, 1 under this transformation remains 0, 0, 1. So let's call that our first eigenvector. Not that we're throwing 7, 7, 9 away, it's legit. But let's pick this one for its simplicity. So 0, 0, 1, and the corresponding eigenvalue is 1. And then you realize that if these two numbers are the same, then in the output, the first two entries will be the same number. And that kind of gets you thinking, and you realize that 1, 1, 0 is the vector that takes advantage of that feature. So 1, 1, 0 is our second eigenvector. And the corresponding eigenvalue is the same. So we will call this eigenvalue lambda 1, as we'll always do, but this one will get a new letter, lambda 2. This will be an eigenvalue of multiplicity 2, because, the chorus, because there are two linearly independent vectors that share this eigenvalue. And it is very easy to prove, and we'll do it very shortly, that when two eigenvalues are the same, then any linear combination of eigenvectors corresponding to that eigenvalue is another eigenvector. So that's why 779 is an eigenvector as well. It's a linear combination, 7 of this one, 9 of this one, clearly of these two eigenvectors. So it's an eigenvector in its own right because these two eigenvectors correspond to the same eigenvalue. If they didn't correspond to the same eigenvalue, then that would simply not be true, that their linear combination is another eigenvector. So right now, we're just going through a couple examples, but then in a future video, we will specifically discuss this question of multiple eigenvalues and of corresponding eigenspaces. So there's a corresponding eigenspace to the eigenvalue of 1, and it's two-dimensional, and it's spanned by these two eigenvectors. In other words, it's any linear combination of these two eigenvectors, including this one. That one's in there. 
out. Can you see one more? I think you can. What if these two numbers are opposite of each other? What if it had been 7 minus 7? Then the average in both cases will be 0. So that vector will end up being 0, 0, whatever the third entry was. So the simplest vector that takes advantage of this is 1, negative 1. So this transformation seems to have the same eigenvectors as the previous transformation. So 1, negative 1, 0. The result of applying the transformation to this vector is, a, is the zero vector. So we'll say that the corresponding eigenvalue is zero. So now with in Rn, we're experiencing a linear transformation with a zero eigenvalue. And we're done analyzing this linear transformation. Except I would like to ask one more additional question which will allow us to use a very nice term from geometry to describe this kind of transformation. And that question is, what will happen if we apply this transformation to a vector twice consecutively? So what is t squared? That's the question. What is t squared? Well, let's, lie, let's take the vector 1, 2, 3 and apply the transformation to the vector 1, 2, 3 once, the result is here, and applying it a second time would still give us 3 halves, 3 halves, 3. And in this case, applying it a second time would still give us this vector back. In fact, in each case, applying this transformation a second time does nothing. So applying this transformation twice is the same as applying this transformation once. And we've seen this somewhere before. We've seen exactly this kind of behavior when we talked about projections. Projections of geometric vectors onto a line. Just to remind you what that was like, we had a vector and the rule for transforming it was to draw the perpendicular line to the line and wherever it landed that's the vector. So if you project this vector and ends up being this one, if you now project this vector a second time it just stays there right there. So projecting it twice was the same as projecting it once, and we captured it by the equation p squared equals p. And the eigenvalues here were 0 and 1. Anything along the line, the corresponding eigenvalue was 1, and the eigenvectors perpendicular to the line, the corresponding eigenvalues were 0, or the corresponding eigenvalue was 0. So this is very similar. So just because this transformation satisfies this rule, we would call it proje a projection. So this is a kind of projection, even though it's very much not like this. These are arrows, these are triplets of numbers, couldn't be more different, but in some ways they're analogous. I see the analogy, and the analogy is this. So we would call this transformation a projection, and lo and behold that having this uh, equation satisfied by our linear transformation corresponds to the eigenvalues being all zeros and ones, just like in the case of a geometric projection. And actually, if you stepped into three dimensions and projected onto a plane, that would be a projection that satisfies this rule, and you would have two eigenvalues that equal one, and one eigenvalue that equals zero, just like in this case. So there's something uh, that relates this kind of equation with eigenvalues being zero and one. Maybe a couple zeros and one one, or maybe a couple ones and one zero. And of course, we also know the analogous algebraic equation, x squared equals x, whose uh, roots are zero and one. So this mystery will be solved in the future, meaning what's the correlation and why is it that this algebraic equation has these eigenvalues as roots? It seems similar, but that's not enough for a mathematician. We need to actually connect them. And we once again see geometric vectors lending their terminology and their way of thinking to other linear spaces.